Mr. Chairman, I rise in opposition to this legislation. Uh, the American people are rightly disturbed by almost daily reports of so-called too-big-to-fail corporations that have received billions of dollars in government assistance and have at the same time paid their employees billions of dollars in bonuses. In response to those events, Republicans have introduced legislation which gets the American people out of the bailout business. That, Mr. Chairman, is our response and prohibits the government from picking winners and losers. We believe that's the solution. The legislation we have introduced clearly establishes a structure where failure is not rewarded, and market discipline is reestablished by placing responsibility for those who engage in risky behavior squarely where it belongs, on the risk taker, not the taxpayer. That is the Republican response. The Obama administration takes a different approach. It continues to embrace the too-big-to-fail doctrine. That's why we're here today. That's why we have to address executive compensation. It appoints a PAYSAR to oversee compensation at the growing list of companies receiving taxpayer-funded bailouts and guarantees, despite growing public outrage over these companies dishing out billions of dollars in government-enabled bonuses the Obama administration and the Democratic congressional leadership steadfastly refuses to embrace Republican legislation or offer its own proposals prohibiting further taxpayer bailouts. Instead, it says that these same corporations are simply too significant to allow them to fail, which not only enables but encourages these same corporations to continue what the Obama administration concedes is more risky behavior. One of the behaviors that the administration and Chairman Frank identify as risky in these significantly significant corporate, I mean, uh, in these uh, systematically uh, significant corporations is executive compensation. Today we are presented with a fix, a legislative response to these bailout fund, bailout bonuses and the resulting public outrage. The cure-all cure -all solution bears the lofty and noble title Corporate and Financial Institution Compensation Fairness Act. It is in every way up to the challenge laid down by our former colleague, Mr. Emanuel, most recently of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, who, never, who said never let a crisis go to waste. It is also in many ways closely akin to the recently departed cap and tax legislation and the ever looming government, or should I say public option, health plan. All three are sweeping power grabs into the private sector under the guise of the government riding to the rescue. All three rely on the government to fix the problem. All three promise to fix the problem, which to a great extent was caused by guess who? That's right, the government and lack of regulation by the government. All three will create, or more accurately, duplicate large government bureaucracies. All three represent ill-advised and, in many cases, incompetent government intrusions. Just three weeks or four weeks ago, the White House spokesman, or Gene Sperling, legal counsel for our Secretary of Treasury, warned, go slow. He said, this is a very difficult subject. It needs testing. Uh, it has potential for unintended consequences. Just yesterday, before the Senate, the White House press spokesman Robert Gibbs stated that the Obama administration is concerned that the chairman's legislation may give the government regulators too much say on incentive-based compensation. But as the chairman, said to the Rules Committee, my legislation goes beyond what the Obama administration has proposed. Now, if that doesn't take your breath away, nothing will. In some ways, this legislation borders on the classic bait and switch. It's being sold as giving the owners of the corporation the right to set pay and compensation standards. That's the shareholders. Chairman Frank, just this week on CNBC, said 
Dollar amounts are for the shareholders to decide. It's up to the shareholders. At the markup on this bill, he said, I would like my time up. Yes, it is. I'd like to yield myself an additional two minutes. Gentleman's recognized for Thank additional you. two minutes. At the markup, he said, say on pay empowers the shareholders. And that's where questions about amounts uh, would come in. True, the first six pages of the bill give the owners, the shareholders, a non-binding vote on the pay of top executives. But then come the next eight pages, the switch, which gives the regulators the power to decide appropriate compensation for not only just top executives, but for all employees of all financial institutions above a billion dollars in assets, and all without regard for the shareholders' prior approval. So under the guise of empowering shareholders, it is in fact the government that is empowered. One lesson we have learned from the government's arbitrary interventions over the past 18 months, and that is the converse of too big to fail is too small to save, which of course is the designation which applies to 99.9% .9 of businesses, which have been deemed by this administration and the regulators is significantly unimportant or significant, insignificant, but not so unimportant, not so insignificant to be totally ignored. While not significant enough to receive a bailout, they are apparently worthy of increased regulation in the form of government mandated pay regulations and new disclosure requirements in the chairman's bill. And finally, on page 15, the bill designates those same government entities which are empowered to control to imp control compensation plans that would threaten the safety of financial institutions or adversely impact economic conditions or financial stability to, uh, to oversee this riskiness. Look over the list and see if it inspires confidence. These are the same government agencies that regulated AIG countrywide and collectively fail to prevent the worst. I yield myself an additional minute. As for an additional minute. These are the same government agencies that regulated AIG countrywide and collectively failed to prevent the worst financial calamity since the Great Depression. If it took them 30 years to catch Bernie Madoff, do you really think the SEC can do a better job of identifying inappropriate risks than the vast majority of financial institutions' executives whose businesses have remained solvent during these challenging times. Really now, is there any question who is better qualified, or for that matter, who ought to be responsible for setting compensation within the American corporation? In closing, Mr. Chairman, this bill continues the Democrat majority's tendency to go to the default solution for every problem, create a government bureaucracy to make decisions better left to private citizens and private corporations. That's what we did in cap and trade. That's what we did in the health care proposals. And it's this bill on executive compensation. Government bureaucrats do not know what's best for America. For those reasons, Mr. Chairman, I urge opposition to this legislation and reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back to